one of the most remote places of Iceland. An adventurous drive over volcanic fields into Iceland's highlands, the heart of the country. Experience the jaw-dropping excursion to the Askia volcano, Öskjuvatn Lake and the stunning Viti Crater. For many travelers, Lake Mühwatten is a destination itself. But for us, the lake was also a hub to go on a day excursion we were super keen on doing. To visit the remote and deserted Askia Caldera in the highlands. Iceland is famous for its countless beautiful sites and otherworldly landscapes. Many of them being easily accessible through the ring road. But the ring road skips one of the most beautiful parts of Iceland the central region of the country, called the Highlands. This part of Iceland is basically only accessible through the adventurous F-roads. The F-roads in Iceland are unpaved gravel tracks that only open during the summer months and are only accessible in a 4x4 SUV vehicle or maybe a motorcycle. The F comes from Fjall, which means mountain in Icelandic. Askja is a stratovolcano surrounded by absolutely nothing but a moon-like deserted landscape of lava rocks. One of those places off the beaten track in the remote highlands. We felt a sense of adventure in just reaching it. And to be honest, we were more keen on taking the F-roads leading to Askja than the destination itself. But with me being pretty pregnant and us knowing about the difficult sandy stretches of the route to Askja and several deep water crossings, we decided that we would change our motorcycle for another means of transport this day. Today we are doing a different excursion, not on a motorcycle, but in this crazy car behind me. And we're going to a volcanic crater called Askia. And this here is our first stop to lower the tire pressure. And um, it's actually an explosive crater that we are in. And back those days it was used for gathering horses here by the farmers. Meet Birkel, who was our guide for this day, spiced it up with endless Icelandic charm and took us on some really adventurous F-roads. How much bar do you let it down? I took about 27 in, in the tires and I let it down to 15. Oh, okay. And meet our vehicle. That was definitely closer to the size of a monster truck than a normal SUV and a so-called super jeep. Askja. Do you pronounce it like that? Askja. Askja. Okay. Here we go. 50 kilometers, 108 kilometers. This is the biggest lava field in Iceland. That's called? Ótáðahraun. <laughs> I think I can't even say that. Or misdeed lava field. That says 35,000 years old. Mm -hmm. You can see the gap here, mm -hmm. the eastern part of it. That is actually from the Glacier River. It was a catastrophic eruption underneath mm -hmm. Vatnajökull Glacier. There are two ways to get to Askja, and we would go for both. On the way to Askja, we took the nearly 80 off-road kilometers of Route F88, that in our opinion had the more easy surface to ride a motorcycle. But one water crossing that can even become impassable for trucks from time to time. So this is what happens when you're attempting this road alone on a motorcycle. There was an accident recently, unfortunately. 
because of these sandy roads here. So always be careful. Our guide Birko told us that unfortunately there are always a few motorcycle accidents a year on the way to Askia. Because many riders overestimate their skills, the length and the difficulty of the track. According to Birkel, the most dangerous part of the track for motorcyclists is the black volcanic sand. That behaves very different to all other kinds of sand that you know, for example from deserts. The volcanic sands absorb more water and therefore can become a very dangerous obstacle for motorcyclists, who often misjudge the difficulty because many of the stretches of deeper sand look rather short. We have a lot of green because this river here, comes mm -hmm. across. That's just a clean spring river. That's cool. Yeah, it's very nice. It's quite comfortable with car. Yeah, it is very comfortable with car. Get up my tulips, I talk that truth. But I'm not just trying to smell the roses. While I'm still here, I'm at the crib, I'm getting toasted. I'm up the dosage, my mind is blowing, set the blow up from my white mold. So I can shoot for stuff. This is the first real stop that we're doing. It's called Table Mountain Springs. The Icelandic name is very, very difficult. And um, it's absolutely stunning. And all of a sudden, super good weather here. What is this area called? Herðubreiða Lindir, or Tabletop Springs. Tabletop Springs. And there's a campground too with the same name. Yeah. When the clouds and the morning fog disappeared, the view became wide open and we were able to see Herdurbreit, Iceland's most famous mountain. The mountain is often referred to as the Queen of Icelandic Mountains by Icelanders due to its beautiful shape. Because of the mountain's steep and unstable sides, the first ascent was in 1908, despite centuries of knowledge of its existence. Close to the Herdubreit mountain lies an oasis called Herdubreida Lindir with a campground and a hut that was built from 1958 to 60 and sleeps 30. In former times, outcasts who had been excluded from Iceland society because of crimes they had committed lived at the oasis. One of them was Fjalla Eivindur, Iceland's most legendary outlaw, who lived there during the winter of 1774 to 1775. There is a spring, and the river goes out. See the spring in there? Oh, cool. This freezes in the winter. Yeah, this, no this freezes in the winter. Oh, okay. And this is all filled up with, with snow. Snow. So there he had fresh drinking water all the time. Yeah. Never had to go out and dig for it. Oh. That's practical. Herdobreida Lindir is an idyllic area with many springs and lush vegetation, home to unique wildlife. You can eat them. Oh. What's it called again? Angelica. Oh, I think my mother uses that actually. Yeah, it's for cooking. It's like for, for medicine reason, for yeah. like... The like... Vikings ate this. Ah. And then we have a lot of wild berries yeah. and a lot of birds. Oh God, don't fall in. <laughs> you have to be fit to... Get your water from the spring. The area to the northwest of Herdubreit is flat and easily traversed, but care should be taken not to underestimate distances, and there is also a risk of getting lost among the lava formations. This landscape is very nice. We learned not only where to best cross rivers from our Icelandic guide, but also how. Here you see the rope, and they say drive close to it. Never cross a river faster than walking speed. According to Birkel, most tourists in Iceland drown their cars because they drive into the water too fast. Their speed causes a wave that floods the air intake of the car. And so, it dies.
here is our waterfall. Ah. Stop here. Uh, you can walk just down there. So here's this waterfall called the Canyon Carver. And it's called the Canyon Carver for a very good reason. I will show you why. What's this place? So this is the waterfall. The waterfall on F88 might not be the biggest one you will see in Iceland, but the rocks are all beautifully polished to shine. Small glacial potholes and many marks show that the riverbed ran here for a long time before it was able to dig itself this gorge. But we have this main source of earthquakes and eruptions are the volcanoes. Mm -hmm. Just like Aska, now you're getting some idea how far Aska actually is. I'm going to show you on the way home a small house. The magma traveled underneath here for 85 kilometers wow. and then came out and it's very close to the main road to start there. The community actually comes together yeah. to help. And you feel that very quickly if you're not willing to help, you're out. You're out. The last part of F88 took us over volcanic fields until we reached the crossroad with F910, leading to Drekki, the last stop before heading to Askia and a campground that is used by travelers and scientists alike. So this is where we're going and it looks as if it rains there. Say they can see a dragon lay there. Uh -huh. It's acting the canyon and the mountains. Because in the mountains underneath there is a dragon placed there. Driki is located at the mouth of the Drikagil Gorge, just under the east side of the Dingufjol Mountains. Drikagil Canyon or Drikagil Gorge is a picturesque ravine connecting Driki huts with Lake Askja. We're at Driki now, which you can see in the back. And if you don't go like we do. This is a very good place to stay. Um, it has some cabins. It actually as well has a campground and yeah, good place to stop over. You can hike all the way through the canyon when the hiking trails are open. We continue to drive in our car though to get closer to our main destination of the day. We are ready for our hike to the Askia freighter. Up here, still snow. It's about, I think, 40 minutes. We will see how that goes. The hike led us over snow fields. Along the way, you can find several information about how the area in general and the Askia caldera in specific arose. The crater just collapsed uh -huh. and it took 35 years for the water to be like this. It was just melting snow and rain uh -huh. because there is no river or anything coming, coming in. The famous Askja volcano in the Dingyufjol mountains is located on the northern side of the Vatnajökull National Park. Its main caldera was formed over 10,000 years ago at the end of the last ice age, when during an eruption the roof of the large magma chamber collapsed in on itself, causing a depression. The result was an enormous 45 square kilometers caldera, 8 kilometers in length. In 1875, another eruption, Iceland's largest in recent times, created a smaller 4.5 km wide caldera inside the original. The explosion spewed poisonous ash into the air, which spread across eastern Iceland, reaching as far as Poland. This smaller caldera is filled with Öskjuvatn Lake, one of Iceland's deepest lakes at 217 meters. We arrived at the Askja crater, actually our destination for today. Um, at least where we wanted to go, from here we will drive back. And behind me you can see a big collapsed crater, which is this big lake. And this here, this surreal blue, that's the Askia crater with sulfur water. That's the reason for the color. 
towards the end of the 1875 eruption, an explosion formed Witte Crater. Lying on the northeast shore of Öskjuvatn Lake, the crater is filled with a milky blue geothermal pool, which is about 25 degrees Celsius in temperature. If you are brave enough to get down the steep slopes of the crater, you can even have a dip in the pool, which at our time of traveling was actually closed due to the slope being too muddy and dangerously slippery. For our drive back from Askia, we took a different route, F910, that started with a drive over a black lava field on a sandy track. Definitely the most challenging part if you would do the route with a motorcycle due to very long, very sandy stretches. Route F910 turned out to be even more versatile than Route F88. And soon our guide took us off the main route to discover a beautiful green valley and to enjoy some coffee. Very strong coffee, the Icelandic way. Strong coffee! This is the perfect place to make a little coffee. Does this place have a name? Arnar Dalur. Arna. Arnar. Arnar. Dalur. Dalur. Ah, valley. Dalur is valley. Yeah. And Arnar means green? No, it is actually uh, the valley of the eagles or eagle valley. Ah, Arnar. Arnar. Like Arn. Arn. Cheers. And this is just a spring coming out of the earth. So this is the cleanest water you can imagine. Farms are actually just built up very close to the coastline. So people went further inland yeah. and tried to find their own land. You have very steep mountains. Yeah, yeah. So the land is actually very long, very long. Yeah. has to be very long so, so you, can, you can farm it. Freshly energized, we continued our drive. So we're going up this mountain now and we're driving on the ridge. And this is a specialty of our guide here who picked this road just for us, more or less. We left Route F910 to approach a smaller track over a ridge of a mountain. Fun fact. Our guide had only driven it halfway so far, so he actually had no clue if he would make it down again on the other side. Now we left the highlands and we're kind of back on safe roads. Not yet. Very soon. Route F910 eventually ends up on the easy and well-maintained F905, which means that you nearly reach the end of your Askia adventure. Or if you drive it the other way around, 
that the adventure just started and that all the gnarly sandy roads are still far ahead of you. Oh, well, this is cute here. Is this like a is this like a place where you can stay too, or it's yeah. just a coffee place? No, you can stay here. Oh, that's nice. Uh, you can eat here. It's cool. Yeah, it's super cool. You can do a lot of things here. Fjalla Dyrt is located on the edge of the northern highlands and has been an active farm since the settlement period. Now there is also accommodation, a beautiful cafe and restaurant and campground. Its location is unique as the highest settlement in the whole country. But we will indeed return to this lovely place in the next episode with our motorcycles. Now we just stopped here to fill up the tires again before heading back to our accommodation at Lake Mühwatten. So back up from 15 to 35 now. Hello! Ah, you're the cutest dog! <laughs> the end of the day greeted us with the perfect clear blue sky. And then all the supernatural beings of Iceland decided to give us an even nicer goodbye from this amazing part of Iceland. Thank you, that was a fantastic tour. And the end of the day is just amazing. As nice as it started. Goodbye to this beautiful car too. <laughs> yeah, now I have to clean it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bye, thank you so much. Guys, next week we will be back on our motorcycles heading towards Iceland's east coast. But if you enjoyed the company of our guide Birkel, the amazing journey to Askia and the adventurous drive, give this video a thumbs up first and leave a comment. And I hope to see you all next Thursday when it's time to gut to go.